What's up, Navigation Traders? Friday, August 21st. Welcome to our Pro Members Weekly Video Update. Uh, let's talk about what's going on in the markets first, starting with the S&P. I mean, look at this range, and not just, I mean, here's this week. You know, I mean, just what a, what a tiny range. But even going back into the end of last week, I mean, we've been in a pretty tight range. You'll notice the, the ranges on our days are getting more narrow. Uh, obviously, the volatility is contracting. VIX is still at 26, though, so there's still decent premium to be had in these options for a lot of the strategies that we use. But, um, man, I mean, I think it was back here. I said, boy, I hope we don't start going into one of those grinds that, we, that we've seen like in 2017, 2019 in the markets. But unfortunately, that is what we are seeing, just a slow, methodical grind higher. Now, if you look at the range of today, uh, a low of 33.56, high of 33.96, so still a 40-point range, which relative to times in the past, <clears throat> excuse me, that's still, that is still a decent range. <clears throat> excuse me. So... We're, uh, you know, you got to just play the cards you're dealt, right? So we're just going to continue to manage our trades the way that we do and, you know, continue. We've been layering in a lot of new iron ducks. Uh, you know, of course, when this market's just going up, we're booking beak profit, beak profit, beak profit. Haven't hit a duck head in a while, but it'll happen. Uh, just be patient. And so that's the plan. One interesting thing, look at look at the difference between the NASDAQ and the Russell. And we've been talking about this in our day trading live stream about the correlation between the indices. Uh, we've been talking about it every day. But look at, I mean, look at what the NASDAQ has done. Okay. Now compare that to the Russell. I mean, these things are moving in opposite directions. So, you know, look at uh, come Monday and, and we'll do this in the day trading room. Um, it won't be an alert or anything, but, you know, that makes me want to put on a pairs trade to go long Russell, short NASDAQ to uh, see if that that pair kind of comes back, see if that the, the difference between those pairs kind of comes back. And and we'll be speaking of pairs trade. We will be rolling out the, the presentation of the pairs trading strategy. Uh, we'll be doing it primarily as it relates to day trading, but there's some swing trading opportunities as well. So we'll be talking about that. Speaking of day trading, let's just go there and jump in and talk about what we did this week. So this was the first full week of live day trading. So uh, every morning from 8.30 a.m. Central to 10 a.m., first 90 minutes of the market, we are Pounded out the mighty 90, the new strategy. So it's been awesome. Total profits for the week, 4,640. Break it down by the day. So Monday, the first day, um, minus 70 bucks. And, and this was one of the days, well, this was the first day toss completely went out. Uh, so we didn't have our charts. We didn't have our the indicators, our pivot lines, our high, open, low, close. Uh, and, and so it, and, it literally kind of happened about 10 minutes after the market opened. So we had to improvise. Uh, we do have the uh, day trading indicators now on trading view charts and they're free. Uh, the trading view charts are free. The indicators are, are just going to be put in the day trading course. They're not there yet. So don't, don't go looking for them quite yet. Uh, I've got to still review a couple things just to, just to make sure that all is well and good. Uh, but I think they're they're good to go. So thank you to Jake Lewis, one of our trade hackers, who stepped up and, and get that got that done for us. Uh, so that was Monday. So we took a little loss. We we stayed really light and just didn't even place too many trades because we were just our tech was not there for us. Uh, next day toss was down again, but we were ready for it. Uh, so booked a profit of three thirteen on the day. Uh, the next day was the big one, and this was this made up a, a good chunk of our profits for the week, and specifically a pairs trade that we did in silver versus gold. So, twenty nine fifty on the silver side, three forty on the gold side. Also did another pairs uh, pairs trade in Nasdaq versus Russell. Booked a couple hundred bucks there, and then the others were mighty ninety trades. So great day on the nineteenth, and then Thursday, which is yesterday. $190.50. The only the major loser there was Nvidia and this was actually two different trades. So I talked about this after the after we got done streaming or after we got done trading on the live stream. Uh, that was two different trades so I lost a few hundred bucks on each one. I didn't trade it bad. In fact, uh, you know, looking in hindsight, I would have done the same thing again. So 
sometimes the bad guys just win, and that's what happened there. So overall, book to profit, decent day. And then uh, Friday to end the week, uh, nice, nice, uh, nice profit of nine fifteen. Now my biggest mistake this week, and if you were in the in the live stream, you know what I'm talking about, and that is Apple. Never should have even been in this trade. Uh, lost four hundred eighty dollars. Should not have been there. And, uh, you know, that's just that's just part of trading. Sometimes you do stupid stuff and you pay the price. So is what it is. But overall, again, great week uh, of four thousand six hundred forty bucks. So we will be streaming live every day next week. So get ready. If you're not part of the day trading stuff, make sure you sign up and uh, and be there. It's in the live stream, uh, live stream trading room. It's at the uh, when you log in your membership, just click on live stream, and that's where you'll find us. All right, so let's go to the alerts for the week. Starting with our first trade on Monday was SPX entered a another weekly double calendar. So we had already put on one the Friday previous. So this was our second one. Uh, did this one the front week four days to expiration, back week seven days to expiration. So I'll get to the close of that here in just a second. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in SPY. So we had had an iron condor. We had closed out the put vertical side, and we still had the call vertical side remaining. And that's what this alert was, is closing that out. Uh, you know, price continued higher. We didn't want any extra short delta, so we didn't roll this. We just went ahead and closed it out. And, and then we've still got uh, the full iron condor on in SPY, which I'll show you here in a minute. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in the queues. And this is one of our sets of short call verticals, rolled it from August, went ahead and just skipped September, rolled it out to October because we we're in that 60 days to expiration range. And we adjusted our strikes accordingly. So let's check out the QQQs to start. So there's a bunker. So here, so here's the one that we just rolled. This is the one that's in October. Uh, price has obviously gone up a little bit since we did that roll. We've got one other set that's still in September, and the price is out of range there, so we need some downside to get back into range on that one. And then we've also got a bunker in the queues. Uh, price is hanging out right here, so need some downside action to, uh, to benefit that one as well. Uh, expiration trade in SPY. So this is one of our iron ducks in SPY that we just let expire. Booked a beak profit on that one. Did an opening trade in TLT. So this is something that we don't do a whole lot, but in this case, we wanted to take a, a bearish position in bonds. Uh, and so we, you know, we looked at verticals and, and, and a couple different strategies, but ended up settling with a, just doing a, just doing a straight long put and uh, to get bearish. And so I will, I'll show you that in a minute because we actually added to that. And I said here, we may consider adding to this position if price continues higher this week. What did it do? It continued higher this week. And so we added to it. So I'll show you the platform when we get to that alert. Uh, next trade, opening trade in Target. So this was a post earnings long call. So when uh, we woke up the next morning, Target had announced earnings and price was well above the expected move. And so we just, uh, you know, Target is not a, a super high price stock. It's only, um, uh, you know, 140 some dollar stock. So uh, instead of doing a vertical, we just, again, bought a, a, an in the money long call, very little theta decay. And we were going to be in this position for not very long. So we went ahead and just put it on. And what happened was just a couple hours later, Target exploded and we went ahead and took this off, booked a nice profit, over 100% return in just a couple hours. Now that even that that's not even included in our day trades because it wasn't really even intended to be a day trade. This was one of our alerts, uh, but we um, it, it came off the same day uh, anyway. So let's take a look at a chart of Target, TGT, and I'll show you what happened here. So this was the earnings announcement, woke up, Price opened up right here, and I and I took this actually live in the in the live stream room as as well before we started day trading, and the goal and I was talking about the goal is if this if price comes down just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and get in, and so that's exactly what we did. So we hit this thing literally uh, pretty close to the bottom, and then and then right after that it just fired up, and we got out uh, for a little over a hundred percent. Uh, uh, return on capital on, on that in just a couple hours. So great trade in Target. 
Tesla opening trade did an iron duck in Tesla. So if you've, unless you've been under a rock, you know that Tesla has just been absolutely in fuego. Cannot stop Tesla to the upside. Uh, and so let's take a look at Tesla. Let's look at the chart first. TSLA. I mean, this thing has just been on a absolute tear. I mean, if, let's just go back a year uh, or let's just go. Yeah, one year and take a look at where Tesla has come from. Now, like everything else in February and March, we had a little downside. And so the bottom, so just in March, I mean, we're talking mid-March, this stock was at, what's the low here? The low was 350 bucks. Tesla was at $350 in March. Now it's over 2000. It hit almost $2,100 a share. That is just, that's bonkers. Uh, so what what did we do? We we just put on an iron duck. And and by the way, before I get to that, uh, as you can see here on the toss chart, there's going to be a five for one split in Tesla. So come the end of August, it's going to turn into about a $400 stock. Uh, but uh, obviously, if you own shares, outright shares of Tesla, then you will... Uh, just get five shares for every one that you own and your values won't change. And so uh, I am not happy about that. I really like big, juicy premium stocks that we can that we can put iron ducks on and things like that. But it will be good for day trading because you know the day trading options on Tesla are uh, are a little pricey. And so it'll uh, allow more people to get in the game on Tesla, which will be cool. So, uh, so that's what's going on in Tesla. So what we did is we put on an iron duck so that we have no risk to the upside. And if this thing does come down, we've got a huge downside buffer and a good area to book some max profits. And this expires next Friday. And so obviously, since we put it on, prices run higher. So we're way up the beak. So it's going to take you know, a pretty, pretty big downside move for us to get back to max profit. But if this thing continues to run, we'll just close it out early, book beak profit. If not, we may just hold it till expiration and let it expire. Even the beak profit though is 225 bucks. So not bad at all. Next trade, NVIDIA opening trade. So we did an earnings iron duck in NVIDIA. Uh, they announced earnings. So before the earnings announcement, we put this on. And NVIDIA uh, overnight after the earnings announcement, price actually came down and then uh, ended up, you know, getting pulled up with the rest of the market and, uh, and ended higher. So we ended up just booking a big profit. You'll see here that it's still showing in our positions, but we're just letting this expire book and big profit. It's an, it's an $80 profit. So that'll disappear tomorrow and you're, you, you know, you're, you're keeping that, that 80 bucks. So that's what happened in NVIDIA. Uh, next trade, closing trade in SPX. So one of our weekly double calendars, just like we've been doing, we've been taking one off on Thursday, one off on Friday. We're going to start taking more off on Thursday. The, this this vol contraction between the front and back week on Fridays is just is just nuts. And if uh, you know, unless unless we get a little bit of a shift in kind of overall um, a shift in overall you know volatility. You know, if we do have you know a big down move or something this week and it next week and it and it changes things then we'll then we'll you know continue on but uh, we're just you know we're losing we're losing out um, by holding some of these till Friday and I and I I've watched it happen too so I don't want you to think I'm I'm not paying attention but we've also had you know previous to the last few weeks we've had some big winners come in on Fridays too so you don't want to just you know, after a couple trades, you want to just completely change what you're doing. But we've always, you know, since we rolled this out, this strategy out, the goal is always either close it one day or zero days to expiration. So that's just the kind of that small subjective part of when you exit this trade. And, uh, you know, depending on what goes, what's going on, we may, we may still hold one till Friday, but we'll just, we'll be monitoring the situation for you all, you know, you, you need to make a decision too. You know, you don't always need to wait for our alerts. If you, if you feel like, Hey, I've got some profit, you know, I'm not, not real, I'm not real confident in what's going to happen the next day, you know, and you want to take it off. Absolutely do it. You know, either Thursday or Friday is just fine. So anyway, we booked, we did, but we took this one off Thursday and booked a small profit. Uh, and then Next trade was uh, opening trade in SPY. So we added another duck, did this one with 20 days to expiration. So let's just go to SPY and talk about all of our trades in SPY. 
We've got quite a few. Let's just go down the line to start with in order of expiration. So here's the first one. This is an iron duck. And let's make sure our calendar is lined up with expiration. So kick this down to 827. So, so we're right here. So we've got about a 15% chance of price still getting back to the duck head. So if price stays where it is or, or goes higher Monday, we'll just close that out and book beak profit. We don't need to wait all the way to expiration to do so. <clears throat> now, we haven't been able to... So the call spreads a dollar wide, right? 328 call, 329. So to book full beak profit, in this case, 110 bucks, we want to we want to buy this back for a dollar or less. Now we haven't been able to do that, and so we've just let some of them expire. Uh, but we may pay a dollar one, dollar two. If we, I'm not, I just really don't want to pay a dollar two. If you need to free up the capital and you want to pay up another two, three, four cents to get out you know, go ahead. But we'll probably, if we don't get at it for a dollar two, we'll probably just let it expire, but we'll see where we're at. The next duck we have is this one that expires nine three. And you can see, we still have put our price slice right there in front of the head. Still got a 32% chance that it could back, get back to the duck head and we're not at full beak profit. So we're definitely not going to be closing that out uh, too soon. And then the next one here is, this one expires 9.10. So you see how we're just kind of layering into these. Uh, this one's got a 36% chance still to get back to the duck head. So again, we're not, we're not looking to take that one off anytime soon. And lastly is our iron condor. So you can see we're up a little bit on this one, 80 some dollars. So just holding this, waiting for some more time to pass uh, for some more theta decay. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in TLT. So this is where I said that we were adding to our TLT position. So we just bought another put. And let me give you my thoughts and show you what, what, we're, what we're doing here. So one, I thought, okay, I think the market's going to continue higher, right? So uh, from that perspective, uh, a lot of times stocks have an inverse correlation to, to bonds. And so I said, instead of just, you know, getting long delta by buying, you know, SPY or some, you know, getting long stocks, I'd rather get short bonds. And part of the reason is, you know, we had this big flush down and then we we're just kind of grinding, grinding higher. And so I'm looking for a continuation to the downside. And so that's why we did that. And, 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 you know, with, with the fed, you know, just doing little weird things, I thought, you know what, this is a good time to get short some bonds and, um, and potentially benefit from that. So we got into our first one after it climbed a few days. And then again, today added this one. So hopefully next week we get a little downside action in bonds and we can benefit from those. So if we take a look at the analyze tab, uh, here's the one that we put on today at the 172 strike, pretty, you know, no P and L on that one yet. And then this one's down a little bit, obviously because price has climbed. So, uh, that's what we're doing in bonds. Next trade, SPX opening trade. So today we open up another weekly double calendar for next week with seven days to expiration in the front week, 10 in the back. And so let's take a look at that. Uh, SPX, not SPY. So it's this one here. Come on, Toss, don't start. Don't start acting up on me again. So on this one, um, one, one of the things, uh, and I mentioned in the comments of the alert as well, is, um, you know, we with volatility contracting, the other thing I did here is instead of doing like 25 to 30 delta, I, I put these deltas, uh, these strikes, a little bit closer to the current price. And so I think it was around the 34-ish delta when I put these on. Uh, let's see what it's at now. Sorry, toss is kind of jumping out. So this one on the call side is the 35 delta, and now the, the put side is about the 30 delta. But um, So just tighten these up a little bit. So, so what that does is it's a little bit lower probability of profit, but potentially higher max profit. And, you know, on calendars, you don't really have a max profit like you do on iron condors or something else. But it, but what it does is it, it reduces this, this sag in the expiration uh, tent 
And so that's that's what we'll be looking to do. Remember, remember initially in this class when we talked to, when we initially taught this, we were doing 40 delta. So we we're doing even closer to the money. So we're going to have to start getting closer and closer to the money, which reduces our probability of success. But I think you know that's okay. It's gonna it's gonna help out with this volatility contraction environment that we're in, and you know we're gonna continue adding one. So if price moves higher, you know we'll add another one on Monday, just like we've been doing. So uh, I like I like the strategy a lot. Still, uh, this week wasn't great. Had one one, one winner, one loser, but um, we will uh, we'll continue to trade this thing because it'll you know we things can change quick we get a little bit of a down move and, and implied volatility switches again we're back we're back in business uh, for some big gains in those trades so we'll we'll continue to trade them and monitor the environment uh, next trade closing trade in SPX I already talked about that that was our second uh, weekly double calendar that we closed out today and then here's the Nvidia expiration trade for that earnings iron duck that we just let expire so those are all the alerts let's take a look at some of the other positions that we have Starting with ES, it's a long put vertical holding for short delta. We've got two of these, uh, both of them a little out of the range. Could use some downside to get back in. Gold, we've got two pieces here. One is this iron condor price is hanging out right here in the lower end of the range. And then we've got this other short call vertical, which was part of our iron condor. Um, and we took off the put side and prices come all the way back into range. Uh, we had uh, one of our members in the community. I can't remember who it was. Kelvin, maybe. Um, you know, price price shot way up here, right? I mean, look at a chart of gold. Price shot way up here, and then, um, and, you know, in that situation, in our iron condor, price was way out here. And the question is, you know, should we do something to, you know, help minimize our our loss on this? But the problem is there was, you know, there's 34 days now. There's oh, there's 40 some days left in the trade, and so the, my comment was, no, absolutely not. You got you got to let these things play out. You know, it doesn't feel good when it rips through your break even, and you think it's never coming back. But guess what? You know, not too long after, price did come back. Now and it's grinded up, and it came back again. So you you got to let the probabilities play out. And especially with an iron condor, these are defined risk trades. So you better be, you better be okay with taking max loss if you know if these things get out of hand. And that's why we always talk about keep your position size small. If it's too big, you know, use GLD or or something else. But uh, we're gonna, we're going to let these play out, and and that's what what you've got to do with this with the with the mechanics that we have set for you. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so I showed you the other piece. So we've got these, these two pieces, uh, 34 days left to expiration. So we'll let them continue. I mean, it may be a situation where, you know, this thing keeps going down and we book profits in that one. And then this one, we end up closing out the call vertical side and then it bounces back. So, you know, uh, letting price kind of ping pong around is okay, but and just sticking with your mechanics of, of, of how to manage those. Uh, sorry, back to the platform. Uh, Natty Gas. Uh, so Natty Gas, we need a little downside action in Natty Gas. Um, sorry, let me get this visual for you. So price is hanging out right here. It's just outside of the range. If we look at the untested side, the puts, there's still a decent amount of premium in there. So not looking to roll up those puts yet. Still got a lot of time, 35 days. So we are just in wait and see mode. Bonds, we've got a short strangle still in bonds. Price is pretty well centered. We're up about $1,200 on this since we did the roll. So it's uh, it's working well for us to get back to profitability. Uh, we will look to potentially roll this once we get closer to 21 days. But again, we're a lot of time here. We've got 35 days left to expiration. Now, what we might do is we may not wait all the way down to 21 days. We, you know, this is the next cycle is getting down to be 63. Next week, it'll be under 60 days to expiration. So we, we certainly could roll out next week. We're at about, um, we're, yeah, I mean, we're over 25% of max profit. So that would be a possibility as well. So we'll be monitoring that and may, may roll that a little bit earlier than 21 days if, uh, if implied volatility contracts and we continue to get uh, some some more profit in that for sure. Apple, the beast from the east, up 5% today, busted out of range on our long put vertical, holding that for that short delta exposure. Uh, so need some downside to get back into range there. 
Uh, I mean, look at this. Look at this move in, in Apple. And in, and similar to Tesla, they are doing a stock split on at the end of August. So this one's a four to one. So for every share that you own of Apple, you will receive four shares. Um, and so it'll go from a $500 stock to $120 stock. Um, again, I don't like that for these types of trade for my, our premium selling trades, but for the day trading stuff, uh, it'll be a good thing. DE had earnings and and popped up a little bit higher, so it it popped out of our range a little bit as well. Uh, with the market closed, don't pay attention to that PL line, but um, need some downside action in John Deere. DIA, we've got a couple sets of short call verticals here. One is up about 150 since we since we rolled it. And then this one is just outside of range. So uh, both of those are in September. IWM, some more short delta positions. We've got a bunker here. This one's in November. Uh, so we've still got some time to hold this and look for some potential downside action. And then we've got two sets of long put verticals. So this one, if, if we get much more downside action in the Russell next week, we will we'll roll this one. And we'll roll this out to October because October has uh, 56 days. So we're under that 60 day mark. So certainly we'll look to roll out if we do, uh, have the opportunity to roll that. And then the other one is inside the range as well, up about a hundred, hundred dollars, but need some more downside before we do anything with that one. I mentioned Nvidia, I mentioned the Q's SMH. So we've got this, uh, short strangle. Now what happened here, remember we got assigned on some short calls. And so we just bought back the stock and re, re-upped on the calls. And so uh, you can see we've got about 240 some dollars back since we did that. And then we've got you know a good amount of profit in the puts. So this is one where you know because of the puts already had a lot of the, the premium taken out. So that's why it looks like we've got a significant profit, over 50% of max profit, but also the reason why we haven't rolled is because we just we just did that with the calls last week. But, uh, you know, we're down to 28 days to expiration, so we will roll this next week. We're not going to wait all the way to 21, but again, we'll roll this out to October, uh, which currently has 56. I mentioned SPX, SPY, TLT, Tesla. Did I show you Tesla? I know we talked about the iron. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that. Uh, XBI coming down a little bit, so we're up about $750 since we did the roll on that one. And we'll be rolling this out to October, either late next week or the following week. And then XLK, another short delta position. We're going to roll this uh, next week because uh, it's just gotten a little bit out of range and we need some downside action to get back in. So to get it back to a positive theta, we will look to to roll that one as well. So XLK, kind of a lot of tech stocks kind of tracking pretty close with the NASDAQ. So that's it. Those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. That's all I got. Uh, look forward to seeing you Monday. For those of you in the day trading room, we'll be there bright and early, a little bit before the market opens, and uh, look to do some mighty 90s. Everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you later. See ya.